His family is shocked. He's truly going to be missed. How friends are helping the family of Lexington's latest murder victim afford to bury him. Three juveniles are facing charges after deputies say they vandalized an Anderson County Park. We'll take a look at the damage. Williamsburg, Kentucky, one of the last stops on Interstate 75 in the state that do not allow full alcohol sales. People are going to the polls today and deciding if that will change. WKYT News starts now with breaking news. Good evening. We will get to our top stories in just a couple of minutes. First, some breaking news overseas. Investigators in Turkey now say that three attackers have blown themselves up at an airport there. An earlier report said there were two of them. Right now, that death toll stands at 28. At least 60 others were injured. Investigators say the attackers set the explosives off at the entrance of the international terminal at Istanbul's Atatürk Airport before entering the X-ray security check. Turkish airports have security checks at both the entrance of terminal buildings and at the front of the departure gates. We will continue to track this story and have the latest on WKYT News coming up shortly at 6 o'clock. Now to our top story tonight. Still no arrest yet in Lexington's latest homicide, and police aren't releasing any more details on their investigation either. As police continue to investigate leads, family of the victim are preparing to lay him to rest. Saturday night, police say someone shot 36-year-old Robert Warner in a parking lot outside the Continental Square Apartments. Kristen Kennedy is talking to his family in our top story at 5:30. Ever since Saturday's deadly shooting, Jerry Warner's been thinking about the cousin he lost. Always smile and always be polite. Warner says the two grew up like brothers. If you've seen Robert when he was little, he was always with me. You know, it, it was not a time that you really didn't see him with me. You know, and we joined his organization the same day. The organization he's talking about is this motorcycle club, the Regulators. It was a group we're told Warner loved. I'm always looking for him to see if he's going to show up. I'm still not believe in what's going on right now. You know, it's not set in. This motorcycle club is hosting bike night tonight. They are raising funds for Robert Warner's family. There's also a fundraiser going on at the Chill Spot Lounge off Georgetown Street. His heart was bigger than life. Um, he gave more than anyone I know. This right here, this touches my heart. Glenn Cowan says his friend helped others often, like when a girl with cancer came to him with a birthday wish. She didn't want to do chemo anymore, and for her birthday, she just wanted all the motorcycles to come and do a ride for her birthday. So without hesitation, he called us, and we all got together. Cowan says he was always doing small things for strangers. And it touched my heart because it's the little things that means so much. He hopes strangers will do the same now for him. In Lexington, Kristen Kennedy, WKYT. There's also a fundraiser scheduled for tomorrow night at the Swahili Elks Lodge off for Sales Road. That event begins at 7. All entrance fees and donations will go to the family. A southeastern Kentucky clerk says he will pay up. Our county by county coverage at 5:30 begins in Perry County. County clerk Haven King was found guilty of harassment and official misconduct earlier this year. The charges stem from a video posted on Facebook of King questioning a woman about her disabled veteran's license plate. A judge ordered King to pay $750 in fines, but King's attorney asked the judge to give him 45 days to pay the fines because they were considering appealing the official misconduct charge. Today, King's attorney said they would not appeal and King will pay the fines. And in Anderson County, three middle school aged children face charges tonight after deputies say they vandalized a park. Deputies tell us vandals spray painted messages at the county park on Monday. They say there was damage done in both bathrooms, in the softball complex, as well as the media box. They also tagged the basketball goals, the soccer pavilion, Lions Pavilion, and the skate park. The three in custody face charges in juvenile court. 
Some cooler air has moved into the bluegrass, and we'll get to enjoy that at least for a couple of days. Chief Meteorologist Chris Bailey joins us with an early look at some great weather, Chris. Yeah, getting the low humidity out there today, certainly much lower than where we were over the weekend. Now comes that cool down we've advertised for a while. It's on the way for the next few days. Live look outside. Boy, it does not get a whole lot better than this with those nine live sky cams. You got to remember now, we're getting close. To July, typically one of the hottest parts of the summer is right around the 4th of July. It may turn stormy this weekend. Defender Radar Network, speaking of stormy, had one little thunderstorm just uh, to our southwest in the parts of Monroe County, heading into northern sections of Tennessee now. Broaden out the view a little bit. Here's a cold front that is loaded up with some cooler air, drier air behind that in the upper 50s and low 60s right now for folks into the Great Lakes. Now, we're not going to be that cool, but indeed, it's a nice little cool down that is on the way for the next couple of days. That leads the headlines, so very, very nice for the middle of the week. Then we get to the weekend. That is the 4th of July weekend, and rounds of thunderstorms begin to crash back into the Bluegrass State. We'll track those when I come back in a few minutes. It's one of the only cities on Interstate 75 in Kentucky where full alcohol sales are not allowed. But voters in Williamsburg today could change all that. The Whitley County seat allows alcohol in restaurants, but the mayor says it's needed in stores as well to keep tourists and businesses from going elsewhere. Phil Pendleton takes a look at how big of a difference this vote could make. It is known to be a highly divisive issue in many of Kentucky's rural communities over the years. People whose lives were destroyed by alcohol and their families. And if you've ever had an alcoholic parent that was really abusive, you'd think twice, I hope, about voting yes. Don Bunch says he voted no on whether to bring alcoholic beverages to Williamsburg. We don't need to make it any easier for our young people to die in automobile accidents. When you have to tell them that you're a dry town. Mayor Roddy Harrison says he started the petition to allow all stores to sell beer, wine, and liquor, but not just so that it would be easier to get a six pack. It's for moving forward as a town. Uh, what you're thought of from the outside world. Voter turnout today was extremely light. I'm told at the county courthouse where about 600 people are registered to vote by noon today, They'd only received about 40 people turning out to vote, or 7%. Voters narrowly approved restaurant only sales a few years ago. We lost by six votes. People just didn't come out, and, and I'm a little ashamed of them. People have a vision, the Wild West, maybe, of that nature. That's not going to happen. We're going to police it, we're going to regulate. Harrison says that the referendum passes, most of the tax revenue will go to the police department. In Whitley County, Phil Pendleton, WKYT. Williamsburg's mayor says they have estimated that tax revenue from legal liquor could generate more than $50,000 for the city. New tonight, we have learned that the Boyle County Sheriff is stepping down later this summer. The Advocate Messenger reports that Sheriff Marty Elliott will resign on September 1st. He announced his decision this morning at a Boyle County Fiscal Court meeting. Elliott says the decision began with a nine-week fight against a cancerous growth in his mouth. He is now cancer-free, though, but Elliott says the stress that comes with being sheriff is not good for his health. The Bluegrass Area Development District is appealing after the state yanked two multi million dollar contracts from the organization. Bluegrass ADD oversees planning, aging, and workforce training programs for a 17 county region in central Kentucky. Back in May, the state withdrew its $11 million workforce development contract. Last week, the state pulled its $6 million contract on aging services, citing ongoing financial issues for both moves. At a news conference today, the director said financial problems have been corrected and the state should not play politics with public services. There are a few that do not want to acknowledge the changes and progress of the Bluegrass ad because they have a personal agenda that has nothing to do with serving the people of the Bluegrass region. Both contracts end with Bluegrass ADD on June 30th. The state is already working with other vendors to continue services. Attorneys for Bluegrass ADD say that neither issue is final pending the appeal. A short list of names is being discussed for the new University of Louisville Board of Trustees. The governor's post-secondary education nominating committee met today in Frankfurt. Earlier this month, Governor Bevan announced he is dissolving the old board and forming a new one. 
University President James Ramsey also offered to resign. Late this afternoon, the nominating committee approved a list of 30 candidates for the new board. From that list, the governor will appoint 10 new members to the board. Three people from the old board are still on it. The governor is expected to announce the new trustees by Friday. Attorney General Andy Bashir has filed a legal challenge to the governor's reorganization of the board. That challenge is still before the courts. Now, you may have noticed more and more bear sightings are popping up in Kentucky. We showed you video of a bear swimming in Lake Cumberland last week, and then later in the week, we had a bear running right through the campus for the Kentucky School for the Deaf. Today's good question why are we seeing so many bear sightings in Kentucky right now? Bear sightings seem to be on the rise. This time last year, we had several reports. Fish and Wildlife is telling us that mating season for bears in Kentucky is mid-May through June. So we're at the peak season right now for that, and that may account for more bears on the move and coming in contact with humans. And while Fish and Wildlife warns of getting close to the animals, they do say the only attack in Kentucky was back in 2010. In that case, the hiker was not seriously hurt. It is illegal to feed bears in Kentucky. Violating that rule will get you slapped with a $1,000 fine. So enjoy the view from afar. To submit a good question, send an email to goodquestion at wkyt.com. One of Kentucky's lawmakers says the sit-in by House Democrats last week was all for show. And another state congressman is donating his entire salary to charity. Bill Bryant has the details in the bottom line. Good evening. A final congressional report is out on the deadly 2012 attacks on a U.S. outpost in Benghazi, Libya, and it quickly became fodder today on the presidential campaign trail. The report faults the U.S. military for its slow response in sending resources to Benghazi despite clear orders from President Obama and others down the chain of command in his administration. Hillary Clinton's campaign quickly attacked congressional Republicans, saying it is more evidence they have politicized the deaths of four Americans to hurt her run for the White House. Two Republican committee members released their own report that criticized Clinton's response at the time of the crisis. Kentucky's longest serving member of Congress says the sit in by House Democrats last week was a publicity stunt. Republican Hal Rogers told CNHI News Service Congress is not in the business of trampling on the Second Amendment rights of law abiding Americans. Democrats tried to force a vote on a measure to deny gun sales to people on terrorism watch lists following the attack on a Florida nightclub. Democratic Congressman John Yarmouth of Louisville is donating his 2015 government salary to charity. The salary is $174,000. Yarmouth is donating his after-tax income to be divided among 17 charities. Yarmouth's office says he has donated more than a million dollars to charity since he ran for Congress in 2006. The polls close shortly at 6 o'clock in Williamsburg where voters have been deciding today whether to allow expanded alcohol sales. The southern Kentucky city right now has alcohol sales only in restaurants that meet the requirements. Bill Bryant, WKYT. A big move for an eastern Kentucky moonshine distillery. Kentucky Mist Moonshine is the latest member of the Kentucky Distillers Association. The Letcher County Distillery is the 28th member of the nonprofit group. The Kentucky Distillers Association members produce 90% of the world's bourbon. Kentucky Mist Moonshine opened in 2015 in Whitesburg. It's open from Tuesday to Saturday, but the gift shop is open Monday through Saturday. 